Okay, so some of the key objectives for this lesson. So we want to be able to define inferences and we want to be able to determine how to make an inference. Okay, so we want to be able to define inferences and we want to be able to determine how to make an inference. Okay, so inference, this is where we combine evidence. So it's something that we might see or read. We combine that with what we already know, our prior knowledge. And that helps us to make an educated guess about a situation. Okay, so based off what we're saying, I want you to think about what makes the difference between an educated guess and then just like a random guess. An educated guess versus a random guess. Okay, it's often going to be like the prior knowledge. So for example, if you have a scientist, let's say it's like they're good in chemistry, they're a chemist. They know a lot about different materials, different elements. That can help them to see, like, if they're combining specific elements, they might be able to make better inferences based on what they already know about the chemicals. Okay, if you have someone that's really good at math, maybe like stats, they can make inferences on numbers based on their previous knowledge. Okay, so we'll look at some other examples here coming up soon. <clears throat> but we bring it up for this lesson because historians often use inferences. When they're studying the ancient past, they make inferences. Hey, so go ahead and put that in your notes. Historians make inferences. Okay, then also you put in if you don't have it, an inference is prior knowledge plus new evidence. Prior knowledge plus new evidence. Okay, so again, this is the formula of what an inference looks like. So you take prior knowledge, then you add the evidence, and then it leads to an inference. Okay, and so with that, basically the better your prior knowledge is, like if you have more prior knowledge, you're generally going to have better inferences. So everyone makes inferences daily, but not all inferences are created equal. Not all inferences are going to be the same. Okay, so if someone, for example, has a good understanding of history, they can make more accurate inferences of what a government will do based on patterns that they've seen in the past. If someone understands, based on a careful study of history, like the patterns of maybe like a controlling government or an authoritarian government, they'll be able to then see if a government's doing certain things that it could be like a risk for that government to become authoritarian. So again, prior knowledge plus evidence, that's what equals an inference. Okay, so another like more simple version of the formula is no plus C equals an inference. So what do you know and then what are you seeing? And then that helps you to make an educated guess. This a bird. Okay, real quick. I want to go back to so going to this guy hitting his head on a laptop. So the evidence, what's the evidence that's provided there? What are you seeing? Do you see a guy hitting his head against the laptop? Prior knowledge Maybe you know that sometimes people can't figure out their passwords, or maybe the internet isn't working, or sometimes the computer freezes up. So you have prior knowledge that sometimes computers or laptops can be frustrating. So then that helps you to piece together a good inference of like, oh, maybe he's frustrated with the laptop, and so he's hitting his head against it because he's frustrated, he's angry. Maybe he doesn't have the best self-control. Maybe even he was typing a paper in Microsoft Word and his progress was lost. Okay, so all of those are like, possible inferences that you could make based on the knowledge that you have that computers can be frustrating. I think that maybe the guy doesn't like like the music that she's playing. Maybe he doesn't like the song or he thinks that the music sounds bad or is annoying. Okay, you can infer that because she has a guitar. So that's, we know that people that have a guitar, they're often playing music. Okay, so that's prior knowledge. And you can see the guy like holding his head Okay, we know that when someone's holding their head like that, like they might be frustrated, maybe he's covering his ears. So again, you can use prior knowledge and then the evidence of the picture to try to make an inference of what you think is happening. You're trying to piece together what you think is going on.